What's up guys, in this video I want to talk about simplifying trigonometric expressions using division. And basically what we're going to do is just kind of look into trying to reduce our terms down to a single number or a single trigonometric function. Now a lot of times these can be confusing because a rational expression is just generally a fraction and a lot of students struggle with fractions. There's one thing we're going to keep as a theme throughout this whole video which is looking for the division property. And if you forgot the division property, no worries, this is going to be extremely important throughout this video. So I'm I'm going to reference it on almost every single example. All right, so if you're ready to go ahead and take a look at how to simplify rational trigonometric expressions, let's go ahead and work through eight different examples to help you really understand how this process works. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first two examples. So for in this first example, what I want you to recognize is I have a cosine of theta times a secant of theta. If I was to write that in terms of sines and cosines, you can see that those are going to be the reciprocals of one another. So therefore their product is going to equal to one. But again, this is also a great time for me to review what the division property is. So I'm just going to write this out one time so you can see it, then I'll make sure I reference it in additional examples. Okay, so remember the division property is basically whenever you have a term in the numerator and the denominator that are exactly the same and they're separated by multiplication, not addition and subtraction, these two values are going to divide to one or dividing them by themselves is going to equal one. So what this is going to leave me with now is this whole numerator is going to be a one and my denominator has not changed. That's still going to be a one over a cotangent of theta. And again, using my reciprocal identity, I can simplify that to a tangent of theta. Now in this next example, we have the sine of negative x divided by the cotangent cosine of negative x. And the one thing that really jumps out to me here is the even odd identities. Whenever you have a negative angle inside the argument of your trigonometric functions, think even odd identities. And by applying these even odd identities, what we're going to recognize here is the sine of negative x is actually equivalent to a negative sine of x. And the cosine of negative x is equivalent to just a positive cosine of x. So now sometimes students will get stuck with the negative being in the numerator, but just remember we can put that negative out in front as a product because it doesn't really matter if it's in the numerator or in the denominator or just out in front. I'm going to use parentheses to take a look at sine of x over cosine of x, which hopefully you recognize is going to be using the quotient identity, the tangent of x. So my final answer here is going to be a negative tangent of x. Now the next two examples are going to look very similar to the last two, but dividing out terms is not going to be as simple. So it's going to add on an extra step. All right, now, like the first example, whenever I have like a rational expression and I have the tangent or I have functions that are not in terms of sines and cosines, a lot of times it's easier just to immediately write them in terms of sines and cosines so you can see what can be divided out or what operations you can go ahead and apply. So for this example, the first thing I can go ahead and do is rewrite a tangent as a sine over cosine and a secant as a one over cosine. All right, now I know this kind of brought in a lot more fractions, which typically when we're dealing with fractions, we want to get rid of the fractions. But what I want you to see here is we have an additional numerator as well as some denominators. And unfortunately, nothing actually simplifies out. However, we can simplify our numerator to give us one fraction by multiplying a sine of theta times a sine of theta, which is gonna give us a sine squared of theta. Now again, that's divided by cosine, which is all divided by a one over cosine of theta. So I want you to also recognize that if I wanna get rid of this, a lot of times students would not realize that I want to multiply a cosine of theta times a secant. Our main goal is we want to eliminate fractions. We want to use the division property. What do I want to multiply by that's going to divide with a cosine of theta? Because in this case, this cosine of theta is in this denominator. Again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by cosine of theta on the top and the bottom. And just make sure you do that to produce what we call equivalent fractions. So in this denominator here, you can see that everything is going to basically just multiply everything to one, right? Now in this numerator, this cosine is actually over one. So now what you can see is we have a cosine of theta and the cosine of theta, those are going to divide to one. And I'm just going to be left with a sine squared of theta divided by one, all divided by one. Well, again, obviously guys, if everything is being divided by one, you can hopefully see that we can just write this as a sine squared of theta. Now in this next example, I'm going to first write this down in terms of sines and cosines, and then we'll use the same process that we did in the last example. Now, a lot of times students will get what we call cancel happy and they just see things in the numerator and denominator that are the same and they just start dividing things out. But you got to be careful. And again, if we go back to this last example here, the reason why I multiplied by cosine over one is because the cosines would divide out. Well, again, this is a big denominator, right? So if I want to eliminate this denominator, I want to make sure it's going to be one. So the only way I can do that is by multiplying by its reciprocal. Well, the reciprocal of sine of theta over cosine of theta is going to be a cosine of theta over a sine of theta. 
And if I do that in the numerator, what you'll notice is nothing actually divides out in the numerator. What I actually get is a cosine times cosine and a sine times sine. So my denominator is all going to divide to one. And then my simplified answer is going to be a cosine squared of theta all over a sine squared of theta, which can be reduced down to a cotangent squared of theta. Now, a lot of times problems are going to look a lot more difficult than they really need to be. Usually a way that we can make things simple is by using our identities. So in the next two examples, we're just going to talk about two different identities that really kind of make this problem look pretty difficult, but they're actually fairly simple. Okay, in this first example, a lot of students will see a lot of squares and then they might get a little overwhelmed. They also might want to go ahead and do this, but please do not do that. Remember the division property only works across multiplication. It does not work across addition and subtraction. The one thing I want you to recognize here is in the numerator, this is actually our Pythagorean identity. Sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is actually equal to one. So now I can just simplify this to a one over a cosine squared of theta. And now by using the reciprocal identities, I recognize this to be a secant squared of theta. So in this next example, you can see that this kind of looks pretty confusing. We have the cotangent of pi halves minus x divided by the cosine of pi halves minus x. And there's a lot going on, right? And what does really this pi halves minus x really do? And what does it represent? Well, to keep things simple, these are going to be our co-function identities. And if you don't have them in front of you, I would recommend that you either have kind of a reference sheet or just to refresh your memory with them on a regular basis. They're not very difficult to memorize. Once you start to see the connections and also you look at them graphically, they are useful identities to know. The cotangent of pi halves minus x is going to be actually the tangent of x. And the cosine of pi halves minus x is actually equivalent to the sine of x. Now I can write everything in terms of sines and cosines to really kind of understand what's going on. So I have a sine of x over a cosine of x divided by a sine of x. Now again, to recognize that I don't want two different division bars, I only want one. So I want to get rid of the sine of x in the denominator. So to go ahead and do that, I'm going to multiply by a one over sine of x, which is also equivalent to cosecant of x. But when I multiply by a sine of x here in the denominator and the numerator, you can see these are going to divide out, giving my denominator a one. And you can see here the signs are going to divide out. So now I'm just going to be left with a one over cosine in the denominator or a one over cosine in the numerator. And then that's going to be all over one, which is also equivalent to a secant of x. I know these problems look pretty difficult, but if you look at the numerators, what you can actually recognize is that we can actually simplify them by factoring. A lot of times we say to square when we have trigonometric functions squared to look for the Pythagorean identities, but that's not really going to help you out in this example. We want to get rid of our denominator. We want to look for the division property for terms to be able to divide out. Again, a lot of students will say, well, these are the exact same terms, but this is squared and this one's not. So we cannot just simply divide our terms in a numerator and the denominator. What I'm going to do is I recognize this is the difference of two squares. So therefore, I can rewrite that as a secant of theta minus one times a secant of theta plus one. Now, what I want you to recognize is since these two are separated by multiplication, I can apply the division property for these quantities of secant of theta minus one. Now, what that's going to do is that's just going to leave me with a secant of theta plus one minus one, which I can subtract to give me a final answer of secant of theta. In this number, you can recognize I have basically the exact same thing going on. I have a sine of x in two of these expressions that are separated by subtraction. So therefore, I can factor out the sine of x. Now, in this example, you could do the difference of two squares again. Hopefully, you recognize that's not going to help me divide out my cosecant of x or really simplify this problem. What I do recognize is this going back to my Pythagorean identities, I can rewrite this as a sine squared of x. Now, what I also did here is I rewrote cosecant as one over sine of x, because again, what I wanted to show you is to get rid of this one over sine of x or cosecant of x, all I'm simply going to do is multiply by a sine of x in my numerator and my denominator. And then what that's going to do is that's again, going to make my denominator go to one, because again, that's a sine of x in the numerator and this one's in the denominator. And then over here, this is all going to be multiplied together to give me a sine to the fourth of x. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, if this was helpful, feel free to give me a super thanks down below. If you want more examples of how to simplify trigonometric expressions through division, go ahead and check out my playlist down below or go ahead and check out the next video I have for you here. Cheers.